Welcome to 60 Tech Tips, Gadgets, and Websites in 60 Minutes. I actually hope to hit a lot more than 60, uh, but we'll see how it goes. Um, make note of my email address if you have any questions. I would be happy to answer those. Just shoot me an email after the fact. And I'll pause for a minute to give you a chance to do that. I'm going to go a little fast, um, so you'll have to be ready to write because I want to cover as many as I possibly can. And if you would like a PDF of the slides that I'm going to go through, shoot me an email and I will send you a copy. Okay, here we go. Quick introduction. Uh, my name is Baron Henley. I went to Ohio State for undergrad in law school. I've been married for 28 years, actually 29 in July, and I have three adult daughters. There's all the important women in my life. Um, I'm a partner with Affinity Consulting. I'm a document assembly and word expert, among other things, office overhauler, and I relentlessly cook new recipes and post my favorites on Pinterest. If you search for my name on Pinterest, you'll find it, and I'm glad to know your favorites as well. Anyway, here we go. My first tip. Um, so this is a, if you have Windows 10, this is baked in, and it makes it very easy for you to get assistance from somebody else. In other words, they could take over your computer and do whatever they need to do to fix whatever's wrong, or you can give assistance to somebody else. So as a certifiable geek, I am the default tech support for my entire extended family. And like take my dad, for example, it's been harder and harder to get him on a web meeting because he can't see very well and he clicks on the wrong things and he doesn't understand what I'm telling him. So um, we've been using Quick Assist, and it has been amazing. He has absolutely no problem getting connected, and I can easily take over his computer and make whatever changes I need to make so that it works again um, using Quick Assist. So you just click the Start button, and you type. Um, you can just start typing Quick, and that'll pop right up. And it doesn't. it's not in Windows 7. There's a different thing in Windows 7 and 8, but Quick Assist is in Windows 10, uh, and it's quite effective. I've actually had um, uh, lawyers ask me about this. They'd, they'd say, is there any way I can just have a conversation occurring in a room all typed up, you know, automatically transcribed? And um, I wasn't sure that was possible, so I went out and did a little research and found um, otter.ai. And uh, this is an app that you put on your phone, and you just turn it on, and, you know, it actually types up everything that's said in the room with amazing accuracy. Uh, in my test. Um, so it's it doesn't say who said what, but at least it types it all down and you can send it to yourself as a, uh, a Microsoft Word file. So uh, they have a free trial and it's only $10 a month for the full month. It's definitely worth checking out if you would like the ability to simply have a transcript of an entire meetings conversation. This is something I recently did. Um, I spend a lot of my time in front of a computer as probably many of you do as well. And so what happened was I walked into Costco and I, they had a 30, 32 inch curved high def monitor sitting on a display showing some high def video of like somebody surfing. And it, it frankly hypnotized me for about 10 minutes. I couldn't stop staring at it. And I thought, hmm, I really need curved monitors. I didn't realize I needed these things until I saw them. But the 32 was just too wide. 232 side by side was just ridiculous. Uh, didn't fit on my desk, but 27s did. So I found these Scepter 27 inch, only $160 each, which is amazing. Now they're high def, so in other words, they're not 4K. If you if you do want to watch, you know, surfer videos on them, it's not going to be 4K resolution. But 1920 by 1080p was just fine for me. I'm doing word processing and other business stuff on my on my screen, so no big deal. And then I bought this little stand that you see, which very easily holds uh, both of the monitors. So for not a lot of money, $320 obviously in the monitors and $30 for the stand, I've got a wraparound display and I have them like angled, but they're also curved obviously. And it's kind of amazing. Uh, so it's one of those things that I didn't realize I needed this until I had it. Now I, I have to have it everywhere I work. Um, but I would definitely check out, considering the price, you can't beat that. And I got all this stuff at Amazon, by the way. 
And just to give you a comparison there, one really wide single curved monitor you can see costs a heck of a lot more than uh, two 27s. And obviously two 27s is more visual real estate than 149, which costs way more. So I think you're probably better off going with the two unless you just don't care what stuff costs. Um, I just, this is just a, I guess a public service announcement. More, we get calls all the time. Um, a lawyer will want to know, well, how do, if I need to redact something in a PDF, how, you know, what do I need for that? Um, so only certain programs can do that. So Adobe Acrobat Professional can do that, but Adobe Acrobat Standard cannot. Uh, Nuance Power PDF Advanced can, Nuance Power PDF Standard cannot. Um, and you can see I've got this, the little um, icons there for whether or not they're Windows or Mac. Um, Adobe Acrobat, unfortunately, is the only one that works on both platforms. It's also by far wildly more expensive than all of its competitors. So if you're budget conscious and my and your Windows uh, user, my favorite is Nuance Power PDF Advanced, which is $170. By the way, Adobe Acrobat Pro, if you buy it, is $450. So Nuance Power PDF Advanced at $170 is a vastly better deal and the functional equivalent of Adobe Acrobat Pro. So it doesn't just give you redaction; it gives you Bates numbering, it gives you you know, the ability to lock down PDFs and edit PDFs and pull them apart and put them back together again. And anything you've ever wanted to do with a PDF, you can do with Nuance Power PDF Advanced. Um, if all you want to do is redact, you don't care about all those, that other stuff, then you might want to check out Foxit Redactor for Office, which is only 40 bucks. Um, and I've got a URL there. But if you just Google Foxit, all one word redactor, it'll be your first hit. I just thought this was cool. <laughs> Um, old, old school timers, and they had a little six pack of different durations that you could just flip over and and have a nice quiet little sand timer on your desk. Um, my favorite flight app. So this is uh, this works on Android and iOS. And here's what I really love about it. I can put in the flight that I'm. Let's say I'm waiting on a flight and it's late. And I don't know what's going on. Um, it'll tell me uh, in real time the status of that flight. Often. Uh, more timely than what I'm seeing on the boards at the airport from the airlines. And what's really great about it is you can actually tap on the incoming flight and it won't just tell you that, you know, what the flight is and where it's headed from. It'll show you the map. Like you can see it's real time progress from wherever it was to the airport you're at that you're waiting on it for. So um, really cool. And uh, this has saved me as somebody who travels all the time. There's been times where um, uh, flight, the um, uh, flight view told me that my flight was canceled before the airline did. And as if, if you've ever been in that, in that situation before, you know everybody is going to try to scramble and grab the next flight that's available. And to the extent you get there first, then you don't get closed out or sold out. So that has saved me in multiple occasions when I found out my flight I was on was canceled before anybody else knew and I was able to rebook and end up getting to my destination thanks to um, Flight View. This is just a really fantastic Windows or iOS, I'm sorry, uh, Android or iOS app for, um, I'm sure you've seen, you can take a photograph of a document and makes it a PDF. Um, that's one of the things that this does. And what I really like about it is, let's say you had to take, you had a two page document, <clears throat> you just wanted to scan it and email it to yourself. Uh, you, this will allow you to do that quite easily. And what, what's really neat is it finds the edges of the paper and de-skews it. So it's not like some weird trapezoid, you know, if you're not directly over it when you take the photo. It cleans all that up um, and makes PDFs out of it that you can send to yourself. It also will scan any barcode, any QR code. You know, if you're at a store and you scan a barcode, it'll tell you, you know, to look it up, look up that product, tell you what it costs in other places and things like that. So it's just a multi-use cool app that, that doesn't cost anything. This is, um, Draftable is a new service that allows you to do document comparisons and it displays the differences in a different way than probably you're used to in the word processor where it might show the new text as, you know, underlined in a different color and the deleted text struck in another color or depending on your settings, it might take the deleted text all the way out into the margin in a balloon, which I don't think many people like. Um, <clears throat> what this shows you is a side-by-side -side that you can scroll through, and it's an online um, tool. 
So, you know, however big your monitor is, is however big these documents will be. But it's definitely an interesting approach to something that lawyers have to do all the time. So here's the problem this solves. You may be aware of the fact that if you scan a document with a copier, it's not the same kind of PDF that you would get if you made a PDF out of, let's say, a Microsoft Word document. Uh, specifically, the, the PDF from the copier often has no text underneath it. Like it's just the photograph of the document. So um, it's not a searchable PDF like the kind that you would get if you made a PDF, PDF out of Word, WordPerfect, Excel, email, you know, any other program on your computer. Those, those PDFs have a layer. So there's a surface layer, which is the image of the original document. And below that is a layer of the text. So if you scan a lot of documents, unless you have a photographic memory and you can remember exactly what you called them and exactly where you put them, you might have difficulty locating them later. And what I often have to rely on is a full text search across all the documents on my computer. Um, so, you know, Macs have Spotlight and Windows machines have Windows Instant Search, and they will search through the contents of your files, not just the file names. And that's often the only way I can find anything. So the problem there is a lot of law firms have been scanning and scanning and scanning and scanning stuff and making lots of PDFs, all with their copier, not realizing those files don't have any text in them. It's just the image. So the only way you can find those things again is to know their file name, which is often, you know, that's why I'm, I can't find it because I can't remember the file name. So <clears throat> you could open those one at a time in a program like Adobe Acrobat and you could convert them. In other words, you could have it read the text and add a layer of text underneath so you could find it again. Or you could get a program like uh, Trumpet Symphony. And what Symphony does is it goes, you say like here, you install it, you tell it where all your files are. And then it'll go look for files that are image only PDFs and OCR them, add the layer of text and move on to the next one. So this doesn't bog down anyone's computer. It doesn't take anybody any time. It just works in the background to find and convert all those files so that you'll be able to find them by the words they contain because now they contain actual text. So <clears throat> Symphony is a, an annual subscription and it's very affordable. And if you have that problem, like you've got all these PDFs that nobody can find, um, this could be the perfect solution. So this is one of the things that particularly people that move from WordPerfect to Word um, grew up about um, because in WordPerfect at the bottom of the screen, there was little tabs and you could click on all your open documents. So it's kind of like tabbed browsing and Word doesn't do it that way. <clears throat> but if you want to drop 30 bucks, you can get this little add-in called the Office tab and it will give you little tabs for all the documents that you have open inside Word like a tabbed browser would. So if that's something that's important to you, 30 bucks and you've got it. File sharing services are wildly popular and legal because there's lots of law firms that want to be able to easily share files across multiple computers, let's say multiple users inside an office. And, you know, the most popular of those services is probably Dropbox. And here's the Dropbox security problem. And you can decide if you if it affects you or not. Um, the files are encrypted when they travel through the Internet and, and with Dropbox. And they are encrypted while sitting on the Dropbox servers, wherever those are. The problem is, if, if the government, for example, seized your data, Dropbox would be able to decrypt it and turn over readable information to the government um, because they also hold the decryption key. In other words, they can also get to your stuff. Um, some services, and is, okay, so let me back up. Let's say I'm an estate planning lawyer. I don't really, I'm not, too, I'm not too worried about the government seizing my data. If I'm Paul Manafort's lawyer, I'm worried about that. There's no way I would keep my stuff in Dropbox because I'm pretty sure somebody might try to take it. Um, if that's an issue for your practice area, like you're worried that somebody might try to take your stuff and, you know, properly seize it and have the server, the service provide readable data, there are certain services you can't do that with that work the same as Dropbox. So Trezorit, for example, the first one listed there, they don't, they, there's no option. They have a zero knowledge policy. They cannot open your stuff. They cannot get to your stuff. Now, let me just point out the big problem with that for some people. 
That means that if you forget your password, they cannot let you in. You can't call them up and authenticate yourself and they can still let you in. And they can't, they don't have that key. So if you forget your password, then all of your stuff is toast. And that, that might be a risk you're not willing to take. Um, Box and Ignite normally work like Dropbox does, which is to say they hold the decryption key, but they have options for you to manage your own, in which case they cannot decrypt your stuff. So three options for that. If you like the idea of file sharing seamlessly in the background, but you want to make sure it's completely locked down. Um, <clears throat> a lot of times in a, in a pleading, we'll have to put in um, links to citations, you know, cases and statutes. And those things get broken all the time. Um, and this is a really easy way to identify and fix broken hyperlinks in your, in your Word documents. So, and this is, this is actually, I tested in Word 365 and it worked fine. So I don't know, they need to update their website there, um, but it does work just fine in the most recent version of Word. Uh, and it's pretty cheap, as you can see, 10 bucks. You just run it and it shows you all the hyperlinks it found. And, and if any of them are broken, it'll, it'll suggest uh, the correct link to fix them. I just thought this was a really cool, you can, you can and this is free. You can just upload any photo and it will completely wipe out the background. And then you could drop that photo on top of any other background and, and have a whole new background, uh, which is kind of interesting. And I like the fact that it's free. And I, I did a couple of tests and it was pretty amazing how good it was. You, you just click, you just said upload, you click, you get a bar graph and boom, you've got now a, it, it somehow figures out what the front image is and, and nukes all the back stuff. So pretty cool. Um, kind of related to that, editmyx.com, uh, this is not free, but what it allows you to do is you can send them photos and they'll, they'll take out your X. So um, <laughs> they had some examples on their website that were quite funny. Um, and then actually people who were like, yeah, yeah I have this amazing photo of, of my, my kids uh, for when they were young, but my ex-husband is in there and he was ruining it. And I was able to send edit my ex. And now I've got this great photo sitting, you know, on my dining room table in a frame. And uh, my husband, my ex-husband is not edited any longer. And they do a pretty, so this is a huge, this is humans. This is why it's not free. It's not some automated thing. Um, but it starts at $9 a photo and they can, they can make anybody disappear that you want to disappear. So if you want to know what your clients think, you should ask them because they otherwise might not tell you. Um, and an easy way to do that is a survey monkey subscription. <clears throat> and I should say, actually, um, I don't remember if I have a slide on this or not, but if you have Office 365, then you have um, a service called Microsoft Forms, which allows you to do the same kind of a thing. You can create electronic surveys and email links to people and then they can fill it out and it will, um, whoops, it will uh, automatically compile the results for you. So anyway, if you don't have that, SurveyMonkey is super good and really easy to use. And they've got a free trial so you can see what you think. And you probably filled out many of these yourself. Uh, you know, I go to, I take my car in for service and I get one of these things, for example. Every time I fly on Delta, I get one of these things. Um, so, you know, you've probably filled them out before. This is just a way to create your own. And it does compile all of them in the background. Um, and you can make them anonymous or not. Um, but it's a great way to find out, you know, what could we have done better? Um, how, you know, could we have, did we communicate well enough? Like there's, it's good positive feedback to help you improve your service. Um, automatic <clears throat> blue book citations in, in Word. Um, legal site, $1.49 a month. Um, and, and they have a free trial and it'll go through and find um, all your citations and make sure they're they're perfect. It lets you it basically lets you build them. So I did a little test with this. It was quite impressive, actually. Um, Zamzar.com, that's Z-A-M-Z-A-R, um, is a is free service. I have no idea why it's free, but they'll convert darn near any kind of file to any other kind of file. Uh, so it's worth definitely uh, checking out if you, for example, let's say I have a, um, a video in Mac format and I want to put it in a PowerPoint presentation. Well, that's not going to work. So 
Zamzar, for example, would be able to convert from a Mac video format to like um, MP4, uh, which would allow you to play that video inside a PowerPoint presentation. So they'll convert almost anything to almost anything else. And you can see all the different formats they can convert from and to if you go to their website. So this was an issue with um, Word when they came out with Word 2016. Um, and so here was the panicked phone call. We got two or three of these. Uh, a lawyer would call me and go, I've been working on a document for like four hours and I've been saving and saving and saving. And then I went in and, to pull it up again and the file is just gone. It's gone. Like, what? did I accidentally delete it? What happened? <clears throat> so we'd log into the computer to try to figure out what happened. And in two or three of those cases, what they had been doing, um, Microsoft Office 365, when you, when you install it, it automatically saves your files to OneDrive, right? So that's in the cloud. And it does this so seamlessly that the lawyers who called freaking out didn't even know they had saved it in the cloud. They thought they had saved it where they save everything all the time. So we found in all those cases, they didn't lose the file. It was just in a different location. And we went into the default settings. And this, so this is true for Office 2016, Office 19, and 365. If you go to the file menu and down to save, there's a little checkbox that is not checked by default. So save to computer by default, not checked. <laughs> so that's why it's going to the cloud. So if you check that box and click OK, then at least it won't trick you. Now, if, you're, if you do intend to save stuff to OneDrive, then by all means, don't check that. But a lot of folks get 365 and never save anything to OneDrive, not intentionally anyway. So if that's your case, uh, you want to make sure that box is checked. This is just a good um, Outlook uh, tip if, you, if you're using Outlook. I and mean, this is almost all the modern versions. Um, let's say you've got a, a back and forth conversation with somebody and there's a whole bunch of uh, pieces of that conversation in a folder. And, you know, it doesn't matter what folder. Let's say it's your inbox. So somebody sent an email and I replied to it and they responded and I replied to it and they responded and I replied. And all those things are all sitting there. And obviously the last one of that the last piece of that conversation contains the entirety of all of those other um, emails sitting in my folder if you click on so this is the home ribbon and you click on clean up folder it deletes all of the old fragments of of a conversation leaving only the most recent one in time the only thing i don't like about that is let's say there was a, an attachment to one of the old emails. It doesn't move the attachment automatically to the one it keeps in your folder. But all the things it deletes just go to your deleted items so you can still go in there and find them um, so they're not permanently gone unless you have your Outlook set up to automatically delete your deleted items, which I find to be crazy that someone would even contemplate doing that, but that is a setting that some people like to turn on because for some reason they don't ever feel the need to search their deleted items. Uh, although I do on a regular basis. So if you don't have some special things set up, then you should still be able to find everything. Anyway, that's a really cool feature um, that most people don't use. Um, so this is a bonus tip. If, like me, you have to travel a lot and you spend a lot of time bored out of your mind in airports, you can buy these fake outlets for 15 bucks on Amazon. And if you just go stick one of those on the wall and watch people try to plug stuff into it, it's, it's quite entertaining. Uh, for 15 bucks, that's a lot of entertainment. Um, <clears throat> this, this website uh, searches law firms. So, you know, a lot of times lawyers now are getting really aggressive, I find, about like putting out articles and blog posts and such, um, talking about whatever they're an expert in. And it, a lot of times you can find really good information, you know, like even if it's just for your own personal, like somebody called me up and said, Hey, you know, I I got this issue in you know Alabama, and I you know I'm a lawyer in Ohio. I don't know anything about Alabama law, um, and and here's here's what it is. And I just want to do a quick search to see if I can find any articles on that. P five O firm is a great place to go because you can type in Alabama and then whatever it is you're looking for. So uh, kind of a search engine of law firms. Um, I hate surprises. So if you, like me, hate surprises, then you can go to the U.S. Postal Service website, USPS.com, and up in the top right-hand corner, you'll see a little thing that says Informed Delivery. And it's this is not available everywhere in the country, but it's available in most metro areas. So if you click on that, 
then every day, um, I don't know what time this happens, but it's, it's in the morning, I'll get an email and it will show me a scanned image of all the junk that's going to be in my in my uh, mailbox when I get home. So um, I, I, I know you're probably thinking, <laughs> why would you care about that? Um, because because I don't like surprises, that's why. And it's free, so I, I get I know what's going to be in my mailbox every day before I go. Home. So, if you never heard of this, Amazon Smile. So you go to smile.amazon.com, and they take a half of a percent of everything you purchase. And they donate it to a charitable organization of your choice. Now, you do not get the charitable deduction, which for many people now with a double standard deduction, like no one's getting a deduction for, for charitable donations unless you donate a crazy amount. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I, it, is, it does really work. And I, what I was worried about was they were upcharging the Amazon Smile stuff. And so I did a bunch of things where I went to one website, I went to Amazon Smile and I checked on something. I went to regular Amazon, I checked on something and I could never find a discrepancy in price between the two. So why not? You know, you can pick the charity you want to benefit and at least you're given a, a little bit of money to your, your favorite charity every time you shop. Another little thing about um, Amazon, if you didn't know about this, <clears throat> Amazon.com Handmade is kind of like an itsy version of Amazon where they have, you know, artists are selling the stuff they've created. And it's quite interesting if you're into that kind of thing, uh, what all is for sale on the handmade section of Amazon. Okay, so this is actually maybe the, one of my best tips ever. Um, if you buy stuff on Amazon, okay, so I buy a stupid amount of stuff on Amazon. And, and particularly if I'm dropping a significant amount of money, uh, you know, several hundred dollars or more, I want to make sure I'm getting the best deal. And the problem is, and maybe you weren't aware of this, but pr prices fluctuate wildly on Amazon for no apparent reason. So the thing is, if you're going to buy the thing you want, you want to make sure you're not buying it at the high point. So all you do is you go to camelcamelcamel.com. And I just want to give you a good example of this. I'm going to drag my browser over here. So <clears throat> last year, um, I bought one of these. I, my, my wife's uh, SUV has a trailer hitch, and we have two uh, bikes that we take around all over the place and go on bike rides. And I wanted this double trailer hitch mounted bike tray, right? So it was kind of, you know, a couple hundred bucks. And so I went to camelcamelcamel.com, and all you do is you, you, you go to Amazon first, and you copy, find the thing you want, and then go up in the window here and copy the URL from Amazon, right click, copy. And then you come here to Camel, Camel, Camel and you right click, paste. Okay, and then you hit, you hit go, hit enter. And it will look up a price graph. So what they do here is they keep track of what the price has been over time. So just to give you an idea of how ridiculous this is, <clears throat> so this is the thing I wanted to buy. I sure as heck didn't want to buy it here. I would really like to have bought it here. But I, I missed that. But I think when I first started tracking this, it was like up here someplace. And, you know, and then I, I didn't pay attention for a while. And then it went up to here. And I ended up buying it at one of these low points. But, I mean, the point is, look at this. It's like it looks like a heart attack graph. Um, it's all over the place. And what you'll find is darn near every little thing is like this. It just goes up and down and up and down and up and down. So what you can do is you can go up here and say, all right, I'm willing to pay, you know, let's say down here it was like 210 bucks. That looks to be a really good price. I can say when it gets to 210, you put in your email address and you say to start tracking and it'll shoot you an email and tell you when it hits the price that you want. So, and you can have multiple of these things going on at the same time. So it's fun just to see what the historical price graph is for any particular thing. The more money you're spending, the more you should want to see it. So really great website, totally free, camelcamelcamel.com. I'm sure you've heard of Orbitz and Expedia and all these flight uh, sites. So as somebody who is constantly flying around, um, I often know where I want to go, but I have no idea which airline goes there from where I am. <clears throat> so Orbitz and Expedia and all those, there a couple of drawbacks of those things. Number one, they're, they're kind of slow. Like you enter, you go, I, I go to Expedia often. I punch things in and it takes it a while to build out the, the flights. 
And then I have to kind of browse through them. It doesn't really rank them by anything. Um, so Google developed their own flight thing. And what's cool, a couple of cool things about it, 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 not only is it ridiculously fast, almost the second you put in the destination, all your flight options are on the screen, um, but it also pulls out the ones it thinks are the best ones based on shortest flight time, shortest layover, highest reliability of on-time arrival. Uh, and so they kind of just, regardless of the airline, they pull those up to the top and like, these are the good ones, but it still shows you all the other ones, and then you can sort by whatever criteria you'd like. The other thing I like about this is it'll show you Southwest when none of the other ones do. So I have no idea how Google got that, but all the other ones don't show you Southwest. And obviously, if you, you know, like in Columbus, Ohio, where I'm from, I definitely want to see Southwest because a lot of direct flights come out of Columbus on Southwest. So anyway, you know, it doesn't cost you anything. And my only other tip on this would be uh, don't buy your flights from these places. If you have problems with your flight, in my experience, if you bought it directly from the airline, you're gonna have a lot better way to go than if you had an intermediary that you're gonna to have to work through. So I would recommend, this will tell you where should I book and then go to that website and book there. But I, I would not recommend actually booking any of these um, uh, because if something goes wrong, you could be at a disadvantage. So, there's reasons, of course, not to trust these big companies, um, but no more Google.com has actually pulled together. Um, uh, and this this is just the browser section. This is a super long list of every imaginable product, <clears throat> email, browsers, you name it. They're just they've compiled alternatives to Google products that don't do any tracking of your personal information, browsing history and that kind of a thing. So if you're trying to like use less Google in your life, um, it might be worth checking out no more google.com now what's what's nice about this is an add-in to, to um, <laughs> speaking of Google their browser is Google Chrome which I happen to see I really like Google Chrome and I don't care if they're tracking me personally it's really fast and I like the way it works um, but a lot of times you'll get tons and tons and tons of tabs you know I've, I'm doing research and I've got all these browser windows open and it starts to slow down the internet and slow down my computer um, you can add this one tab, which is free, and then it puts a little button in the browser. And when you click on it, it, it takes, it collapses all of these down to one screen. Actually, I'll just show this to you. So let's say I had over here, I had um, you know, CNN open, and over here I had ESPN open, and over here I had Sports Illustrated open, and then I had the weather open. <clears throat> I got all these browsers up here. My computer's slowing down, my browser's slowing down. Um, so I go to the little one tab button. Watch what this does when I click on it. Um, see, it just collapsed all of those um, websites I was on to hyperlinks. So now I've only got one tab open. And you can see it, it actually keeps all the ones you've ever done that on. So like if you were doing research and you needed to stop because you had to go to bed or whatever, and you wanted to come back and see that same list of all the sites you were on the next day, this is a great way to do that because you just click the tab and it shows you all the ones you previously collected. So if I click on this link to ESPN, then it'll reopen that tab, right? But it doesn't do it automatically. It's going to stay back here if you click this little button that, that one tab adds. So I think that's a pretty cool service. Um, lots of lawyers are buried in, in email. And if you use Outlook, uh, one of the reasons one might use Outlook is because it's the most popular email program in, in, in legal for sure. Um, and there's because of that, there's a lot of add-ins that make Outlook better and do things Outlook can't otherwise do. And one of those really fantastic add-ins is called Quick File for Outlook. Um, and it allows you to way more easily uh, sort, uh, store, and folder your emails. Uh, among other things, so it'll in like it'll set up rules that'll automatically put emails into folders. It'll automatically capture outgoing emails, and you can see. Um, and this is an annual fee, so that's not crazy expensive. But there's a lot of features that come along with this, and they do have a free trial. But this is a one of the most sophisticated and really usable um, Outlook aids for organizing emails. So if you have that problem, this is definitely worth checking out. This is uh, free. It's a part of Office 365, but you can get it for free even if you don't have Office 365. And it is Microsoft's task management system. 
Um, so my my task management system I used to use was called Wonderlist, W-U-N-D-E-R-L-I-S-T. And I just loved it because it was so, the graphical user interface was so easy and it would sync with my phone and my tablet, and my laptop, and it always reminded me of stuff I needed to do. And you could put subtasks and you could share and you could add files to your tasks and you could annotate your tasks, add, you know, every feature I, I could possibly want. And then Microsoft bought them. <clears throat> Microsoft decided they wanted to incorporate that into Office 365, but apparently the way it was programmed, it could not be incorporated. So they punted and started over with the same development team. So that all the people that wrote Wonderlist basically replicated that for Microsoft in a way that would integrate with Office 365. And that is called Microsoft To Do. So I switched over and today it has basically the exact same feature set as Wonderlist. It still doesn't cost anything. Um, and actually, Wonderlist was not free, and to do is. So I'm kind of happy about that. Um, but it also, if you have Office 365 and you use Microsoft To Do, it automatically syncs to the tasks in Outlook, which I don't really use. I don't like the tasks way, the way they work in Outlook. I find them kind of ugly and, and intimidating looking in that screen. Um, but at least I can see them there. Like I, I don't put them there. But they show up there anyway. So you and they have a desktop app for Windows and Mac for Microsoft to do, and of course for phones and tablets as well. So anytime I put a task on any of those devices, it's automatically on all of the other devices, and it reminds me of things by multiple ways if you want it to. So definitely worth checking out if you're struggling with that. This is another um, add-on to Office 365. So in other words, this comes with let me, you know, this, I guess this should be a tip. Um, let me just show you real quick uh, Office 365. So if you go to Office 365 and let's say you're a subscriber and you go to the to the main dashboard, which I'm trying to get to here in a second, it'll pop up maybe. Come on, Office, okay. So um, I click up here and I say, I click up here and I say, go to Office 365. And this is gonna take me to my Office 365 dashboard. And what I want to draw your attention to is, so up here is where I install Word, Outlook, Excel, et cetera, on my computer. But it comes with a whole bunch of additional programs that most people don't even know are there. And so if you click Explore Your Apps, you're going to see a long list of stuff that you get with Office 365. And as you can see, it's quite a list. One of those is Bookings. Okay, so here's what Bookings does. I, as you know, I constantly, my calendar is constantly full of meetings with other people, usually phone conferences or web meetings. And we're always doing that, you know, let me know when you're available thing, which is annoying. I mean, it's easy if it's internal, but if they're external to your organization, it's not easy. And typically they'll say, send me some dates and times when you're available. And I send a bunch of dates and times and none of those work. And they're like, yeah, but none of the, can you send me some more? And we, we go back and forth and it's, it's annoying. I'm sure you've done it before. What this allows you to do, if you use Outlook as your calendar, is you can set up a link that you can email to someone and then they can they can put stuff right on your calendar. They can't see your calendar. They can only see when you're available. So here's how this works. I'm just gonna show you what mine looks like. So I click on this link, it pops up. This is my, um, my bookings site. So I decided, I was going to let people make 30 minute, one hour, two hour appointments. So let's say somebody wants a one hour appointment. As soon as they do that, it, it makes bold. I think hopefully you can see. So I've got appointments open on the 18th, 19th and 30th. So if I click on the 19th, it shows me I got 10, 11, 2, 3 and 4. And if I pick one of those and then I fill out this little form and click book, that will put their appointment right on my calendar directly. It'll send me two emails. I don't know why I get two emails instead of one, but it sends me two emails telling me they did this, but it shows up on my calendar. So they obviously can't see what's on my calendar and you control what days and times they're allowed to book stuff. Okay. So I could say, yeah, people are only allowed to book stuff on Tuesdays and Thursdays between one and 4 PM Eastern time. Okay. That's all they'll see are those two days and those slots of times. Um, you can also determine what buffers you want. Like I want at least a half hour buffer between appointments and that would eliminate other things. But this is amazing. And honestly, without exaggerating, it, it saves me about an hour a week of scheduling stuff. And so this week I've got all these points on my calendar, none of which I went through that annoyance 
of trying to set up. Um, so it's included in Office 365, I think, in all of the bundles. So that's one of those things that if you have Office 365, this is totally worth checking out. Um, this is just a setting in Windows and Mac that will, so the, um, the blue light in the spectrum is supposed to make it harder for you to fall asleep tonight at night. So if, if you're like me and you're typically staring at a screen right up until the minute you go to bed, because I have a tablet, I, I read news and stuff on my tablet, so I'm often like laying in bed and reading junk on my tablet, sometimes a book on my tablet. If you're getting the blue light, it's, it's supposed to um, make it harder for you to fall asleep. So I have an app on my tablet that filters out the blue light at sunset, but the Windows computers and Mac computers also have a built-in thing. So the Windows thing is called night, not, night light, and the Mac is called night shift. And what's cool about them, like when you turn them on, then it automatically knows, you know, the internet knows where you are geographically, and it automatically turns itself on at sunset and turns itself off at sunrise. And even though that's a moving target throughout the year, it knows because it knows where you are. So it's free, it's built in, and if you are looking at your laptop right before you go to bed all the time, it might be worth turning that on. Microsoft Dictate, <clears throat> this is a uh, free add-in uh, to Word and, and, and Outlook, and it will actually um, type what you say. So if I click on this button, this, let's see if this works while I'm trying to do a web meeting. <clears throat> oh, yeah, it doesn't like my internet connection. Um, but it's, it's a surprisingly accurate. You can see I'm stuttering. There we go. Uh, period, new paragraph. Something happened to my audio stream. Oh, you know, it's probably because I'm doing the web meeting. That always screws up everything. But it's it's really quite good if you're not in the middle of a web meeting. Um, so definitely worth trying because it doesn't cost anything. The only drawback is you can't teach it how to say a word it doesn't know. It's going to continue to mess it up. So it's not like Dragon that you can make better over time, but it doesn't cost anything. So uh, another interesting thing, uh, the, these virtual assistant websites where – you know, people have a skill. Let's say I can build websites for people, and that's what I do for, as my job. But I'd like to make some extra money on the weekends, so I want to let people know that I could build them a website in my free time. I could put that in one of these Upwork, Freelancer, Guru. And as you can see, there, there's some legal specific ones now where you need, like, I need somebody to do some research, legal research for me, or format a document or something like that you can sign up and what these sites do is they take a tiny little percentage of whatever you charge um, and that's how they make their money. But basically they're bringing together, in this case, service providers and service buyers of various kinds of things that you might wanna do. And then it, it related to that are when you need, I just need labor, right? I just need somebody to do something for me. So um, a, a good example here uh, is something we have, we're doing right now, actually. Um, we, we had just finished a seven-year lease at our, for our office, and the landlord was, you know, they're like, hey, listen, we can upgrade your space and do all this stuff uh, if you'll do another seven-year lease. So we negotiated that out. And so we're having all this, we're having a new conference room with glass walls and a new kitchen with a giant island and all new cabinets and appliances and blah, blah, blah. And our office is like being transformed. But as part of that, we had to buy, we bought a bunch of new tables because we've got a whole new conference room. We had to buy a bunch of tables that could be, um, you know, on casters and they had to be put together. And we bought a ton of chairs for, we, we have two conference rooms. We bought all new chairs for all the conference rooms. So all this junk is being delivered to my office in boxes. And of course, the last thing I want to do is burn a whole day assembling stuff. So I got on Tackle is the one I used. I've used TaskRabbit as well, but I just decided to, decided to try Tackle. Then I described the job. You know, I'm like, I'm willing to pay $250 for this. I think it's going to take three hours. You know, maybe I blew that estimate. And all these people pop up and like, I can do that. Here's how far away I am. Here's when I can start. So I, I, had, I hired two different guys through Tackle to assemble all of our tables in the first place and then all the chairs in the second place. And it was awesome. And so I, I highly recommend this. And I don't know if you if you shop at Ikea, you'll notice that right on their website, they have a link to TaskRabbit where you can have, you know, a strange person come over to your house and put your Ikea furniture together for you, which if you've ever done that, you know, that's worth paying somebody to do. Snopes.com. I know you probably heard of this, but I, I want to keep spreading the gospel of Snopes. 
Um, cause like when my dad sends me, uh, you know, an email and say, is this really true? I'm like, dad, will you seriously? So I, you gotta, you go to snopes.com, whatever crazy thing you heard and it'll confirm or deny it for you. Okay. So they do a lot of research. I really appreciate what they can do. I donate to their site because, you know, they're burning a lot of time trying to help extinguish nonsense things that get spread around on the internet. And for example, this one, did Texas hunters accidentally shoot each other and blame undocumented immigrants? That happened to be true. <laughs> they really did do that. And I guess the investigation revealed <clears throat> that they actually just shot each other and there was no <laughs> there was no immigrants around. They just managed to shoot each other. So anyway, uh, Snopes.com, super great site. And if you appreciate what they do, then you know, send them a buck or something. Uh, these are just two websites that I think people should know about because they're incredibly useful. Let's say if you've got an appliance in your house or your apartment and it breaks and let's say some little part is broken or something's you know not working right, these are the two websites that will tell you how to fix it yourself if you don't want to call a plumber or call a, a parts repair shop. So you can put in, like let's say you've got a Bosch dishwasher up of a particular model. You put it in and they'll show you every little part that could possibly go in that thing and you can buy them individually. So like a tine broke off in my dishwasher, you can buy one of those. I need, you know, a little piece for my refrigerator. They sell that. A stove part, they have that thing. So if it costs $1.75 or 17 bucks or something, you can find it. And what's really great about these is they have videos on how to install. If it's anything even remotely complicated, they'll have a video that shows you how to take, take out the broken thing and add the, the new part. So all the the videos are all free. Super, actually, the the production values are pretty pretty awesome. Um, but I just love the fact that they're allowing you to to figure out how to fix stuff you probably would have never tried before. And you can save yourself hundreds of dollars. Word has a feature. <clears throat> this is Word for Windows only. Um, if you click on the file menu and then click on info on the top left, there's a manage document button. And if you click on that, you'll see. Recover unsaved documents is an option. And you might wonder, how could you save a, uh, recover a document you didn't save? Well, here's what it does. If you make a change to a document and you close it, you know you get that window that pops up and says, hey, do you want to save your changes to the document? If you say no, Word saves it anyway. So if you did that by accident, if you said no by accident, you can probably get back that document. And if you click on this on your own computer, it'll show you a list of all the documents you said no to, and you can actually click on them and open them. Now, if it bothers you that that's happening, you because it, it keeps them, right? It just queues them up. You can delete all unsaved documents, and you can actually turn that off if you want. So if I go to the file menu and down to options and Word and click on save, right here, I don't know if you can read this, keep the last auto-recovered version if I close without saving. If you uncheck that box, it will stop saving documents when you say don't save it. But otherwise, it'll save the last auto-saved version of it, even though you said, I don't want to save it. <clears throat> Artificial intelligence um, is actually becoming reasonably affordable and available to everybody now. So this is one example of it. You can, all these services that you see on your screen right now, you can upload your brief and it will find case law for you based upon uh, the, the document after it reads it with its AI uh, engine. So the first one I'd heard about this was Kara AI. Uh, and these, these the Eva is the only one that's free and I, I can't imagine it's super great. I haven't tried that one. Um, but these other ones you have to pay for, but they, they'll actually, they'll, they'll, you can even upload uh, a brief from opposing counsel and see if they can tell you if any of the citations are no longer good, you know, it'll, it will tell you. So these are interesting new services. More of them are popping up all the time. These are just, I, I just pulled these out as two examples. Um, you put one of these things in your luggage or let's say your daughter's car in the back seat, and then you'd be able to geolocate that uh, luggage or car um, using this, the app that comes with it. And so this is the annual fee for the service that allows you to track it, but it could be luggage or whatever. These things are little batteries, little battery packs in here and, um, they can, and, and they're global as well. So it's not just us. 
if you travel a lot, this might be worth some worth getting if you want to check your bags. Uh, sideways dictionary is just a cool dictionary that explains things in terms of analogies. So it takes it's all tech terms like geeky tech things, but it's kind of cool the way they explain what a thing is like two factor authentication. Um, this is actually a really good description of that. Uh, it is like Cinderella slipper. A softmember.com if you like background noise and lots of apps do this, but here's what's cool about this one. I can, I can do my own mix. Like I could say, give me rain at half volume and a little bit of thunder and, uh, some, some birds. And then I can save that as a mix, and then I can play that mix of rain, thunder, and birds whenever I want. And they have apps, so I can do this on my computer, or I can do it on uh, any tablet or phone. So, like, when I'm on the road, I actually like to have background noise. Uh, I, I typically listen to white, white noise, um, but I like to have the background noise that helps me sleep when I'm in, in a hotel. And this doesn't cost anything, and it's pretty cool. Certified mail, if you have to do this and you know the annoyance of rolling in those green cards into your typewriter, and a lot of times that's the only reason people still have typewriters, there's services for that now, like iMail tracking, if you would like to get rid of that responsibility in your firm. Um, this, is an, this is a bonus tip, but really cool. You get home from work and you're exhausted and you, you don't want to order something, you want to make something, but you have no idea what to make. You go into this website and you tell them what you have like what's in your refrigerator, what's in your pantry, and they will tell you all the recipes you can make, and they link you to the recipes from all these different other websites. So it's totally free, and I think that's a really cool idea. Um, <laughs> I don't know who thought of this, but it is evil. Let's say you owe, you owe your client a document, and you're late, <clears throat> you're way behind, and you don't think there's any way you're gonna finish today by the deadline. You could go ahead and send the file as currently done, to corruptafile.net and they will corrupt the file and then you can email that corrupted file to your client and when they try to open it they won't be able to so they'll they can corrupt anything and then and then you know the client would call you back and go dude i can't open this i'm not sure what's going on it seems like it's corrupted and you go oh no gosh um let me check into that and i'll get back to you tomorrow and of course that would give you an extra day so that is really evil but that is a really interesting idea and it's free, corruptafile.net. This is a uh, free website that allows you to create a random picker. So like these are the people in my department and if we have to, like somebody has to do something that nobody wants to do, you just click on this and it will spin the wheel and then stop on somebody's name. And unfortunately there's no way to set it up so that it never lands on your name if you set it up. I thought there'd be some way to do that, but there's not. Um, anyway, this is flippity random name name picker free website kind of cool. Um, it's kind of unusual, right? Where a, one piece of hardware is winning all the reviews, but right now, um, the, the the Dell XPS 13 is winning all of the la and this is it doesn't matter. They're comparing Mac and Windows machines here, and this thing is taking all the awards. So that's kind of unusual. Um, but these are really amazing machines. We have, I don't know, six or seven of them among various employees here. And they are, if you want a really powerful but very thin and light laptop with a touchscreen, or they have two-in-one versions that are also a tablet when you want them to be, the XPS 13 is kind of amazing. It's a 13.3-inch screen. If you want a bigger screen, they have a Dell XPS 15, which has a 15.6-inch screen. Um, obviously, it's a little heavier and bigger. Uh, but that's the penalty for getting a larger screen. Rabblelaw.com keeps track of how judges rule on issues, and if you're going to be before a judge and they've already encountered the issue you're going to argue in front of them, you can find out how they've come down on that issue in the past. So that's a LexisNexis service. Um, detach and, and file email attachments easily. Um, easy detach and it has a free trial. So if you're always like losing track of the attachments to emails, and some people uh, unfortunately use email as a document management system, even though it isn't, uh, this makes it really easy to automatically capture the attachments and put them someplace where you'll be able to find them again. Too many passwords to keep track of? Of course you have too many passwords. Um, so I think you need an, a, a, a password manager. And a password manager, there's a lot of reasons to have one. 
one password unlocks all your passwords and all your credit cards and all your logins. And in my case, it holds um, my driver's license uh, information, my passport, my global entry uh, ID. It tells me when these things are going to expire. It holds all the logins and passwords for everything. It has all my credit cards, my bank account information. Everything's in there. It's one spot to put every little piece of personal information that you want to protect. And ultimately, it allows you to share it with people if you want to. So this is actually one of the reasons why I got a, a password manager in the first place. And our family, I pay all the bills. I do all that financial stuff for our family. My wife doesn't want to deal with it. Okay, I do it. But if I die before she does, and I will for sure, if you knew my wife, you'd know. Um, I wanted her to be able to administer my estate. She would have no idea where anything was unless I had some means of sharing all this information with her. So I got the original reason I got a password manager was so I could do that. But then I, I was like, oh my God, I was angry with myself for having waited so long to get one of these things. It also makes up passwords for you. So I use mine and it comes with these crazy passwords that I, I, I couldn't remember if I wrote them down a thousand times in a row. Um, but I don't have to. It fills in all the blanks for me and it automatically works. It synchronizes across my tablet, my phone, and my laptop. It's not stored on the internet. It actually downloads a locked vault that you have to unlock on your local device through two-factor authentication. You can read about all that stuff if you want. Um, I use the top one listed there, Dashlane. We feel so strongly about this as a company that we actually got a corporate version of this and all of our employees have a Dashlane account now. And my so I have a personal Dashlane and then I have a business Dashlane. So if there's certain passwords that we need to share among users our employees, then we do that with the corporate side of things. These are all good, and you know they're, they all have free trials, so you can test drive them. But if it, like this is every single security thing you read, bar none, will recommend that you get a password manager. So you, it, it really is a way because I before I used passwords I could reasonably remember, which meant by definition they were weak. And now I only need to know the one ridiculous password that unlocks all my other passwords. And, I, and it's much easier to only deal with one. So I've been systematically, and before when I started doing this, you know, for hundreds of different logins, I used the same password. And every single security thing you ever read will tell you that's a ter terrible idea. Um, but I just wasn't creative enough to come up with all the passwords. And, and it we even told me when I first installed this, like, you are so pathetic. You use the same password for 300 different sites, and you need to change that, and it would give me a score, and, and I would continuously try to make that score better. If you've got a laptop and you're out and about, um, it's a really good idea to have a privacy screen so that people can't see it. Like, I, I, don't, I never take mine off. It's on my, I have one for every computer I have, and you can't, I even have one for my phone so that people sitting next to me can't see what I'm texting, for example. Uh, so particularly if you spend time on an airplane where the person sitting next to you is bored and you're doing email and it's interesting, you don't want them to be able to read it. So these can be removable if you want them to be, or you can permanently, and they're not, it's not permanent, it's got this 3M clear sticky stuff on the back that you can peel it off if you want, but uh, people can't see what's on your screen. Now, if you have two monitors, um, it, on your on your office system, it really gets you get used to that. And then when you're not in the office and you just got your laptop, it's really annoying to have only one screen. It feels very limiting. So we we tried a bunch of these, and this was you know, easily the best one. And what I really love about this is, it's it's high def. M almost all the other one, all the other ones we tried, they were not 1920 by 1080. They were something less than that. So when I drag an, an application over to the external portable monitor, it would get fuzzy and blurry, and I, it just was irritating. So this is a 15.6 inch high def screen that gets its power from the USB cable. And these, they have a model that'll connect to USB 3.0 or Thunderbolt or USB type C. So whatever you've got, you can find a model that does that. Crazy thin light. I just use, it has the, it, this stand comes with it, this little case stand, but I didn't like that. So I got a, an iPad stand that I just carry in my computer bag and I carry this thing with me everywhere. So if, if you need an extra screen, this is a great way to get it. Not very expensive. And the, uh, it was $180 maybe on amazon.com. If you've got an iPad you're already carrying around, then make that your extra screen. And the best way to do that is using Duet. Um, Duet is, you know, 16 bucks, but you only need to pay that once. 
and that will work with a Windows. In other words, I can make my iPad as a second screen, even on, if I'm using a Windows computer. It doesn't have to be a Mac. Um, great service. My favorite um, headsets, wireless headsets, and these will work with any phone, right? Any phone, an old, ancient, yellow desk phone that's radiating your head, this thing will still work with it. So I get these on Amazon, <clears throat> and don't buy headsets from any place that only sells headsets. All that means is you're paying like 30% too much. But Plantronics is a fantastic brand, and we've had darn near every brand that exists in our office. So like a 300 foot radius, you can walk around, you can talk on the phone, your hands are free. If you like to take notes on the computer, you can certainly do that. Then this is another, because we have headsets, so people never know if you're on the phone because I'm always walking around with a headset on my head. I for even forget I'm wearing it sometimes. So we have these things. So right now, I, this outside my office is burning red because I'm on the phone, and that way no one's gonna come barging into my office when I'm trying to record a webinar. Um, and that's really, um, uh, we're out of time. So I'll end with this. If you have kids in your house that have um, that ice cream radar and they can always find it, you can actually get for 26 bucks this handy little pint lock that will keep people from, uh, from sneaking into your ice cream. Ed, uh, let me go back to the beginning, uh, the beginning of this. So there's my email address again. If you have questions or maybe you'd like a copy of, that, of the PDF of that slide deck, shoot me an email and I'd be glad to send it to you. Thanks for watching.